and our guest today burst onto the Corey Cobbles back in 1997 as 19-year-old Leanne Battersby. Since then, she's had her share of ups and downs, but nothing could have prepared her for her current heartache, desperately trying to find out what's wrong with her little boy, Ollie. Oh, it's just awful. Really tough to watch there, isn't it? Jane Danson joins us now. Hello, Jane. Thanks so much for talking to us. Um, oh, gosh, Jane, it's, it's, it's such a powerful storyline. And, you know, Leanne has focused on many a storyline over the years, obviously, relationships, affairs, various bits and pieces. But I know this storyline is particularly a tough one for you because it's so real. Yeah, I felt that over the years, obviously, you know, she's she's been involved with lots of storylines revolving around men, the making and breaking of relationships. Um, but this storyline, it just felt like we had a huge sense of responsibility because sadly out there, this is someone's story. Um, it's it's not a particularly easy story to be involved in, but it, it is someone's journey. Um, and I've had already had lots of messages from families who are sadly going through what Leanne and Steve are going through. So we, we have a sense of responsibility to get things right and to tell it as truthfully as we can. So we've done lots of research. We're working with a charity called the Lily Foundation, which supports families um, who are going through this. So we've worked with them quite a lot to kind of not just get all the medical side of things right, but just the human side of things as well, which obviously from my point of view is, is mass massively important. Um, we've, we've spoken about how people react to this situation, what an impact it has on their families and their friends, and obviously their everyday life. So with the story, we have got a long way to go. Obviously we're on pause right now, um, but there's still a long way to go. So uh, yeah, it is quite difficult in parts. Mm, I can imagine. So even just, just watching those little clips, I find it actually very difficult. Yeah. Um, and of course, you know, there's lots of talk about uh, what our soaps are doing at this stage. So, and it's such an important thing to g keep them on the air more than anything, yeah, exactly. isn't it? In, in this have lockdown situation, exactly that. Um, how have you managed to keep in touch with all of the, the cast at this point, Jane? Are, are there lots of Zoom calls happening? Uh, what, what's going on amongst you all? Yeah, um, like yourselves, we're kind of doing a lot of Zoom in. Um, we've got a WhatsApp group with the boys and the girls. We're all sort of keeping in touch together as a group and individually. Um, so it's really nice because even though we're obviously so used to seeing each other every day, um, we can keep in touch with how everybody's coping. Um, and like you were saying earlier, everybody's dealing with things differently and we all have good days and bad days and, you know, we're all finding different things to do. But um, yeah, we're, we're a little Corrie family and I know everybody always says that, but it's true. So, yeah, we're very much in touch and we're very much looking forward to getting back to work when it's safe. Um, I read in the brief that um, you were worried about that you wouldn't get the sack um, <laughs> when you read the storyline. Is that true? Um, I wouldn't say worried I was going to get the sack because I think when you're in a soap, there's always that kind of fear hanging over you if you like um it's not you know it's never guaranteed as a job for life and you can always become a casualty of a storyline but i felt with this story it was i was worried in which direction it might go i was worried how leanne might cope um if the worst comes to the worst um so i was a little bit concerned um but i obviously and I, I do know what the end the end game um and i do know that this will change leanne as a character but hopefully that will hopefully mean that I can um, take you in a different direction and, and I can continue, but um, who knows? <laughs> mm. Jane, it's really lovely to see you. The last time I saw you, you were dancing on thin ice, basically. <laughs> <laughs> a little tutu on, doing your uh, things in the air. But uh, are you missing skating? Oh, Saira, we had such fun, didn't we? we? Did. I, absolutely. The best experience and the hardest experience of my life. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really missing the ice. I, I was going quite regularly before lockdown and, and just, you know, I've not improved at all, but it's just a nice way of clearing your head and switching off. Um, so I've not done it for a while, but oh. um, have you been? <laughs> I, well, I started off and then, you know, life takes over. But, you know, you were saying that you're part of a WhatsApp group with uh, your Corrie friends. We've got a WhatsApp group for dancing yeah. on ice and it's, it's, it's quite nice to kind of keep in touch with people. How, how are you finding homeschooling with your two boys as well? Awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's really difficult because I've got one child at high school who just kind of gets on with it and he's had very much a lot of his work sort of submitted online. He can do that online and send yeah. it straight off. My youngest is in year six, so he's just about finishing off, really. So I think he's found it more difficult because... You know, he was just about to do his sats and then it would have been all the fun stuff, the yeah. levers production and the levers assembly. So they may miss out on all that, okay. which is really 
unfortunate. Um, so yeah, there doesn't feel like there's been a huge amount of motivation for the year sixes because they were kind of almost done. So it's been kind of hard in places, um, but he's done as much as he can. But it is, Jane, yeah, it's, uh, ask... it's... Jane, I've got to ask you, um, your hair's looking very good. So did you go to the hairdresser or have you found someone close to home who's got an unexpected talent. <laughs> well, I don't look too closely underneath. It's still a bit dark and a bit gray. Um, but yeah, I was getting very desperate a couple of weeks ago. And um, so I popped to the shops um, and, and bought some dye and my husband um, very kindly, there you go. Oh, <laughs> you a good job. Tell. He has done a good done a job. great job. Can you send him round to us? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Is yet though. <laughs> Very impressive. And a bit of baking going on at home as well. That's how you've been kind of killing the time too, I believe, Jane. Yeah, I think we're all kind of doing similar things, aren't we? I, I, I probably much, much like yourselves. We don't always have time to do all them kind of things with work and kids and, you know, keeping to busy schedules. But I've, I've quite enjoyed that. I've done a bit more cooking than normal. Um, I'm not great, but I, I give it a go. Um, VE day, I did some nice cakes and we sat outside in the lawn and it was nice. But yeah, just having a bit of time to just relax a little bit. Um, I feel a bit guilty because of what's going on in the outside world. But um, I think it's anything to pass the time, really. Yeah, it's making the best of what's happening within your own bubble isn't it really it's kind of what we're all trying to do look Jane as always it's so lovely to talk to you and we I do know with the storyline and Corey I, I find it very hard to watch I've got to say but um we will be as always yeah. thanks so much Jane take care of yourselves you too thank you bye bye, bye.